good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I was like, I, I started like this and I was like, I'm just going to leave my hand here because it looks so dumb. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, hey, I'm it, looks cheesy. it looks cheesy. It doesn't look dumb. It just looks cheesy. You just have to go like this on your beard. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's I'm Tuesday. Never, Lori Jatari. Lori, how has your week been? Oh, dear. Um, very compartmentalized. Like, I, I, I think um, I'm just I'm down in Florida taking care of family members and and working. And so in this case, Zoom has been fantastic. Um, I look forward to getting back and enjoying spring. I can see the sun shining behind you. And actually in Florida today, it's quite cloudy and rainy. Oh, no. So, yeah, oh, it's so um, some storms so, coming through. But yeah, it's OK. The sun is, it's like the sun a, is shining oh. so bright here that I had to turn around um because i couldn't see you uh <laughs> from, from my normal positioning so oh man um but i i love it yeah i got up uh this morning and answered emails uh walking around my yard um mm. just, doing, just literally doing laps around the backyard here uh listening to music and and uh answering um emails which um which that's like the ultimate multitasking morning routine you're Wasn't walking that? music answering emails and exercising all at the same time i mean listen i wish that i could say that i do that all the time that was the first time that that's ever happened and hopefully that's cool knock on wood hopefully i usually don't have wood that close to me uh and hopefully <laughs> that will be uh that will be a, a, a new normal um situation uh so that's cool we are um we we have a jam packed show today. Uh, yeah, we are we are currently waiting on our guests to um to to arrive. Uh, yeah, and we have two uh, we have two wonderful guests today, and and we'll get to them uh, in a few in a few minutes um, nice. when they arrive. Uh, we have our normal business over breakfast guest, and then we have uh, Caswell Cook, um, the executive director of the Musquamook Business Association, and someone who is working closely now with Governor McKee. Uh, mm -hmm. to help get the small business grants out. Oh, um, fantastic. And uh, so Caswell is going to come on and, and give everybody a little bit of information about how to get those grants. So, uh, and then we'll clip that and we'll put that out as well for everybody, just as a set, you know, as, as we do. Yeah, can that's you great. A little, can you talk a little bit about the videos that you and Scott have been making of the, the, the clip show version of the show that you can find on Instagram and, uh, and LinkedIn? Um, yeah. So talk a little bit about that. Okay, so what we've been doing is, you know, we know that sometimes um, our audience likes to see the whole show and kind of understand what what people are thinking about and talking about. And I'm just going to give us a little plug because next week is our Q&A show. So we want to make sure that if people are thinking about things as as we think businesses begin to reopen, bring us your questions. Um, so. But we also know that a lot of people are looking very quickly at, they just want the top five things to know or the top three things to know. So we're taking our business over breakfast show and we're creating small clips as well as doing short business profiles. So we're gonna start um, on our shop local work. We'll, sh we'll start like a little um, blog page. So the businesses get a profile, but we also pick out the top, you know, the key points that the businesses bring, because part of what we do is hopefully businesses are learning from other businesses and realizing that if there's a business guest on and they say, oh, I, I tried this and it worked, then we say, oh, hey, you know, call Jane or Jim and see what they're up to and make connections so that businesses can learn. And I, I say it over and over again, you know, the rising tide, Rhode Island, Florida, maybe the rising tide uh, lifts all boats. And this is this is the the whole premise around this kind of sharing of business information. I mean, it's um, we're all in it together and we all have different skills and we all run different businesses. So um, I think that there are some things that we can really learn from each other. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that that's the biggest, if, 
if you're, you know, I think that we should all be listening to, to other people because, and contextualizing things to ourselves, right? So, yeah. um, so like the, if there's, um, we had the fish guy on a couple weeks ago and you probably don't own an aquarium business, probably. Like I'm, I'm just going out on a limb and saying that I think yeah. that the majority of the people watching this uh, and that will watch clips of this <laughs> probably do not own a business of installing multi-million dollar aquariums into uh, hospitals <laughs> and hotels um, and, and homes. But, but uh, you probably want one. <laughs> right? Yes, or, or there's a technique that he talked about or there's a way that they adapted to COVID that they talked about or, you know, um, the escape rooms that we had on was a great uh, was a great version of something where they were uh, an escape room is a very uh, uh, personal in person um, intimate experience of you going with your family and friends to an escape room and like that's the that's the draw of that business right when you're thinking about the why of the business and the and the what and the how you build an escape room you market it locally. You get people that are local to come in with their friends and family, and you do that. When the pandemic hit and they couldn't do it anymore right. for a little while, they uh, opened up. They they found ways to do it virtually. And now, if you go back and listen to that episode, they have people from Europe and all over the world who right. are visiting their escape rooms virtually. And now, while they're uh, limiting the virtual um, escape rooms to a couple days a week because they have to, uh, you know, work on their main core business, which is that in person, yeah. they now have business from all over the world that they never would have had. Right. And that's right. the, um, and and if you can, you know, you you don't own an escape room. I guarantee that <laughs> not more than one other person watching. Wait, did you say I don't own an escape room? room? Are are you sure about you, that? You, I don't think you do. <laughs> I mean, you might. I haven't seen Scott in a while. He might be stuck in there. But, um, but you know, but that's the but that ingenuity, right? Is right. That you can take with you for right. for your business, for your jam business, for your um, whatever it may be. Absolutely. And the the other thing that they did now, thinking about spring, is they started um, almost like escape escape room treasure hunt type things where they give you the backpack and you do the whole thing outside exactly. and you try to solve the mystery. So you, you know, you go, you pick up, you get your code, you pick up your backpack and then you kind of like, uh, it reminds me of that, like around the world show where the couples like have to go from one place to another and then, and then solve the mystery or whatever. I don't know what that's called. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and those are two things that they probably wouldn't have done before, you know? I mean, and and so here he is expanding his market both locally and internationally, which is is really yeah, we've seen we've seen some really neat things and then and then to understand like how did they make that happen? Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. And if I mean you know, there are so many different ways to, to do that. There are, I, uh, I was recently listening to an interview with um, the CEO of a company that they're, they do a lot of retail mm -hmm. and the majority of their business is in retail and they didn't have, a, they had a good infrastructure for online um, before the pandemic, but that's not mm -hmm. where the overwhelming majority of their um of their sales came from and their goal for 2020 was to double their sales and they had a very aggressive strategy for how to do that in retail um in big box stores mm -hmm. and when costco and everything closed um all of the people that bought their product in stores were easily able to find them online on amazon on their own website wherever it may be mm -hmm. and they didn't lose virtually any sales um wow when that, when that shift happened and then when costco and walmart and all of those places opened back up again uh fully mm -hmm. and, or or the con or the consumer confidence was high enough that people started going back into the stores all the time uh their business picked right back up to where it was in person 
but it never dropped off online. Wow. So they got both. Right. And they doubled their double projection. They quadrupled yeah. their profits in 2020, 2021 because of wow. because of yeah. um, because of having a good online because of what they they had an online infrastructure, which is what Shop Local Rhode Island is all about. Right. right. Getting, these, getting these local um, businesses that don't necessarily have never had to. Like if you are a local right. mom and pop shop in Rhode Island, why have you ever thought about uh, going on the internet? Right. If you're a small business right. in Cranston, you yeah. never had to. You had foot traffic, you had a name, you had people that have come for 30 years to your store. Yeah. You know? but- yeah. And, and now the store is closed or it was closed. And I think that was the purpose of the whole shop local Rhode Island was so that people could contact the stores directly or see what was going on inside the store. And now in two months, every one of those members on shop local Rhode Island, 2000 plus businesses will be able to um, put products on their page and sell them. And so, I mean, and for free, for free. So if yeah. you have a business and we're, we're going to say that if you have five products or less, like, like for us, you know, we do social media or I do business coaching. So if I say, I, I just want to put out, you know, certificates for business coaching, I can put that out on shop local Rhode Island for free. And so if you have like top five products that you sell, you're going to be able to, to maintain your listing and, be doing e-commerce on the marketplace. It's been, holy moly, it's been <laughs> quite an undertaking. <laughs> but you know what? It's going to be so much fun and it's going to be so cool. For the Absolutely. state, it's going to be amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so have you explored at all the NFT space that's exploding right now? Tell me more. <laughs> okay. Do you know what an NFT is? Because I'm you, thinking it's some kind of fund. No. Uh, uh, so anyway, it's a it's called a non fungible token, right? And anybody that's watching this, go 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 uh, research this. Okay, if you're on Clubhouse, you can go on any any Clubhouse room. Give it ten minutes, it will become an NFT room. Um, you can, wait. It's a non funded non fun non fungible token. So what oh, fungible means okay. is that there it can be you know there's more than one of them it's a commodity right okay so think, okay. Of this, think of this like collectibles like trading cards you know Pokemon cards baseball cards um, art high art uh, paintings stuff like that um, this uses the blockchain oh yes for so this uses blockchain to um, basically what it is is it takes a it's an opportunity for digital artists to uh to create a non-fungible token right to mint to mint their token so say that you made a piece of art right say scott who's a photographer um took a beautiful uh photograph he then minted that as a non-fungible token he can then sell that uh and someone with a with an nft wallet can buy it um and and scott gets the money and if he writes the nft contract a certain way anytime someone else sells that that original print. Now Scott could still use that print. People can replicate it. You can do it with gifts, digital art, tweets, uh, audio files, songs, anything, anything digital. Um, you can you can then sell. So it's creating a full um, marketplace, a gigantic marketplace for art, for wow. uh, creators, for all of that. And in the next within the next couple of years, it's going to create a big opportunity for businesses yeah. to do things like that. Um, like the business certificates that you were just talking about. Yeah. Um, taking a, taking a certificate, taking a, say your book, right? Say you sold your book and you made, you made your book an NFT. Yes. Learn to leap. There it is. Check it out. Uh, <laughs> say you took your book and you made your book an NFT. Right. Mm -hmm. And you mint and you you made twenty NFTs. These are the original. Co it would be like buying an original Harry Potter. Now, say you blow up as you're going to massively. Uh, the value of those books, those original books, those original uh, yeah. files, copies yeah. are gonna are gonna go through the roof like a trading card, like a collectible, like a piece of art. 
right? <laughs> so you would then you could then get a piece of that every time somebody else buys it. Um, so that they own, and, and you keep it and people can see your public wallet. Uh, and, and how do you? Okay, yeah. I feel like we need to do an entire show on this. We need to get an NFT expert on here. Yes, I know some. So let's let's make shout that out. Happen. Yes, but for right now, uh, but for right now, we have an expert on, and I'm going to go full screen so I can introduce him and change our background. Uh, right now, we have an expert on these new uh, business grants. Hmm. Um, he is the executive director of the Musquamica Business Association. He's a member of the Westerly Town Council, and uh, he now works with the governor uh, for special projects, including right now, helping people find out more about these grants. Ladies and gentlemen, Caswell Cook. Yay! Hey. <laughs> hey, good morning, Caswell. Good morning, guys. How are um, you? Have you guys ever well. met each other, Lori and Caswell? No. Well, just just through uh, you know your your circle, Ben. Okay. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. We both. see each other uh, online. That's true. That's true. You both just met a cool person. I promised I would do that anytime I introduced anybody. So I have that's to true. from Ted Lasso. Um, so Caswell, tell us a little bit about the uh, the business grants. Well, so the governor announced it last Thursday, uh, last week, and it opened last Thursday at three o'clock. Uh, so if you go to commerceri.com, it's a small. It's the first thing that pops up, uh, mm -hmm. right above PPP. It's the Small Business uh, Grant Relief Program. So it's really simple. Um, and now it's it's funny because I, I had said to I said to the governor, I said, "Boy, sometimes it's hard to give away free money." <laughs> yeah. Now, now in this case, it's going. We've been fast. down this road before. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so many things have strings attached, and this one doesn't. So when the governor uh, released this money, it's twenty million dollars, and it's money that came from the CARES Act. And it was, you know, I guess, squirreled away, whatever, wherever it was. It wasn't released until last week. Um, and this $20 million amount is in the form of $5,000 grants to small businesses. So there's only a couple of uh, requirements. One is you have to make a million dollars or less. So it truly is a small business uh, that can apply for that. Um, and when you go online, they purposely, um, Commerce purposely made the form simple. Um, yeah. so you don't have to do, I know some people applied for restore RI, some people have applied for PPP. Some of it at the beginning was a little confusing. Um, you know, you were uploading like schedule C's and like having to like track down your accountant. You don't, need any, of that. Yep. You don't need any of that for this. Um, mm. it's a simple formula. Um, it's basically, you know, year over year. And if you show a need for at least $5,000, you're eligible. The, the thing is, the, the most recent number they published when this opened on Thursday was a couple of days later. They had already gotten 11 million in applications out of the 20. Wonderful. So I can only assume by today that number is up there. So it, the program's open on April 30th or until the 20 right. million is spoken for. Yeah. Well, I'll, oh, sorry, Ben. No, go um, ahead. I'll tell you. So every week um, for the shoplocalrhodeisland.com site, we send out a newsletter with updates and the newsletter has about 2,400 Rhode Island businesses on there. And so we did put that brief update in there and with the links to Commerce RI and the information. And so hopefully that has helped to push the word out, which we do every, every week. So um, yeah, if you have more information, please feel free to come on and share because this is what we do. Yeah, well, it's it's. I mean, it's definitely a, a, a use it or lose it type of situation. Um, mm -hmm. And I know people, you know, that, that sometimes there's a hesitancy. Oh, well, maybe I don't, you know, I don't meet those requirements. Um, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> there's there's always like, and I'm I'm just here to yeah. tell you that if you do it tomorrow, it could be too late to receive basically, you know, free money. I mean, this is money that the federal government appropriated to Rhode Island. The governor turned around and is appropriating it to small businesses, and you. But you have to take advantage of it. And then the other thing that you know, uh, commerce wants to remind people about is the PPP is still available, mm -hmm. payroll protection until May thirty first or until it runs runs out. And that's another thing. And they don't have the numbers. So with the with this uh, small business grant, they they can track in real time how much money is being applied for. 
with the PPP, you got to wait for an update from the federal government. So again, right, right. you know, and those loans will most That's likely great. be forgiven. Yeah. As long as you, you know, as long as you use it for payroll or things like that. So tell us a little bit about the audience. So, you know, our audience is um, are small businesses, we hope. And so I was speaking with a business last week and I said, you have to, you have to put this information in, go and apply. And the response was, oh, I don't know. It seems like it's going to be like another big deal. So tell, can you talk a little bit about just the process of like, sure. what you know, what do you need to gather before you get on your computer and apply? You know, just, I mean, if you do, if you have QuickBooks or however you keep your ledgers, you just need to plug in a number from 2019 over 2020. So you don't need the tax return. You don't need the you don't need the proof of it in front of you as long as you have the numbers. Now, in 5% of the cases, they are going to ask for more information um, just because there has to be some kind of control on this. But it's a it's a 5% situation. So one out of 20 people are going to get asked for a little bit more information. I don't know if Ben can if you can pull up Commerce RI's website on the screen and yeah, we could just yeah. go. We could look at it real quick because it's so it's the first thing that pops right, up right. on Commerce's website. So, yeah. Uh, we can walk you through what that looks like right now and then nobody will have any excuse not to apply uh like no i think that's like great today. yeah i think all that's right. so super important okay so we're on the front page we're on the home page all right see the top um, left small business relief grant top program. Left, right under the logo and of course i'm not wearing my glasses so i can it's harder for me to see but anyway if you scroll down there <laughs> that gives you the criteria uh, who is eligible? So it's like right there. But click mm -hmm. on apply now. Sorry, a large cat just walked by me. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bobcat, right? <laughs> no, Not a bobcat. Just a large one. <laughs> one second. It uh, it opened up in a new screen. That's the only thing that I hate is when things open. Oh up yeah. That's uh, all right. It's 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 business over breakfast. I'm drinking right. a coke. Right, I, have to jump I was going to say, what is that? I don't usually do that. But. It's either Coca Cola or coffee. Right. So you see this here. Just if you just scroll down, it's very simple information. You know the business name, the business legal name, your social security number. Um, let me see if I can. There we go. I can make my screen better. Yeah. Keep so going. Tell me about. Tell me about when you say your social security number. So if you're a business and you're applying for it, who's it's just the one of the owner's social security numbers. Right. There's that, and then lower down in the form, okay. it will ask you for your if you have an EIN or a TIN. Okay. So right there. So right on the right here, SSN, TIN, EIN. Mm -hmm. um, number of employees primary industry and then if you keep going down a little bit more um so you just answer some of these questions then here's the need calculation right here um yeah don't go yeah good, there we go all right sorry mm -hmm. I, I pinched my screen to make it bigger so you put your 2019 gross receipts your 2020 gross receipts um and then it, it, the COVID related financial assistance and then net need and that's it that's mm -hmm. it that literally is it right there um, oh that's cool oh look ben's plugging in numbers and it's working covid related oh okay so that's other financial assistance that the businesses have received right and i think they, that's been updated um where they don't, if you got, uh, and I don't want to misspeak, so I, I better not yeah, misspeak, yeah. but I, th I believe that they waived some of that. So if you got uh, other COVID money that you don't have to count that against it, but the, mm -hmm. obviously the form still says it. So, that's but yeah, so that was, ba that's basically it as far as, um, you know, uh, sorry, there's my fingers as I adjust my <laughs> iPhone. I, I just, I totally forgot to put on my glasses and I'm looking and I want to like have to look like this with my eye. <laughs> but you see how simple it is, Lori and Ben. Yeah, no, I, I think it's super important because, um, oh, this is great. Um, that's a friend of mine. So we have a, another guest coming on too. So that does quilting. Um, yeah, I think it is. It's really important and every little bit helps. And Ben and I were just talking about how businesses that have gone online and are selling online can now 
try to even maintain that new stream stream of revenue for themselves as they move into their business. So that extra that extra buffer or a little you know cushion of five thousand dollars, I think, can really support a business's um, conceptual or you know one it could just support their costs. But if you're thinking like, how do I maintain the revenue that I've been able to generate and open my business up again? That 5,000, I think, gives a lot of kind of more than food for thought, but a little bit of a cushion to allow businesses to think about how they want to maneuver forward. Right. So with something like PPP, um, which I applied for through my my restaurant at the beach that's open in the summer, and they, they give you specific guidelines. Okay. A certain percent can be used for rent. A certain percent can be used for uh, payroll. And you have to follow that in order to get, you know, uh, the loan forgiven. With this grant program, it's five grand. It's mm-hmm. yours. And, right. and, as, and when I was with the governor the day that it was announced, and, you know, we were talking about it with, with uh, uh, Secretary Pryor and uh, uh, some other folks that the governor pulled into this project. And, you know, he's like, this could be, for a small business, this could be three months or four months of electric bills. This could be right. a, a month or two months of rent that could just get them over that hump until right. the mask mandate's gone or whatever, or whatever the, you know, I mean, right. I know that there's like, I, I bring up like the martial arts thing because our, our friend Kiefer here in Westerly has been saying, geez, you know, I've got people standing 15 feet apart, but they still have to wear a mask. Like what's up? But people aren't, people aren't coming because of this and, and whatnot. And so he's got to, he's got to wait until that next phase of how many people yeah. are vaccinated before his, you know, before that's lifted from his business. So this 5,000, that could be very helpful to a business like his, you know, oh, hey, absolutely. boy, that's that, this yeah. is the rent for the next couple of months until until yeah. I can have more people in a in a class or something. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, so I think in Rhode Island where the thing for businesses that I've experienced in the last year plus is there are a lot of people supporting and trying to support businesses in Rhode Island, people in government and like out of government, us and the Rhode Island Small Business Coalition. And there have been so many discussions about how do we cover, how do we cover this funding? Like, do we stick to, you know, the fixed operating like rent? Do we do something different? So I guess for the audience and and what you're trying to do as well, Caswell, is to let the businesses know, like, here's another thing, and and we're going to look at the masks, and and we've never been through this before either. So we we have we don't have all the answers, but we can at least keep communicating everything that we're working on. And as more people get vaccinated, the mask thing is going to shift a little bit, but we we don't know how. We so don't. we're yeah yeah, and and, and you know I, I think there's also more money coming. Um, there's i think there was uh, if i remember the press conference last week correctly the governor said there was 30 million dollars that he that they his administration identified that's supposed to get out into the hands of small businesses and this is 20 million of that now that leaves another several million i know secretary Pryor said a small amount was spoken for but i think he's got another plan that he said he was going to announce in the coming weeks uh, that mm-hmm. might be to help businesses with um, some physical improvements to what they've had to change because of COVID. I mean, I was talking to uh, Rebecca Green, who owns uh, Cold Stone in Westerly, and you know she had to like reconfigure the way people come in and out of her place, and yeah. that's an ex- that's an expense. And also, it, it it defeats the purpose because people come to Cold Stone to watch them make the ice cream on the Cold Stone, <laughs> right, <laughs> and now, right? And now they yeah. can't watch it. <laughs> we need to put her on the list. This um, because one of the things that um, like we we were talking about all the different businesses we've been able to work with over the last year. And the one of the cool things that you just said about Coldstone is this idea of reconfiguring internally. Like we've talked a lot about the fitness centers, you know, and just measuring spacing. But when someone comes into a coffee shop or an ice cream shop and one of the things in our video that um, Dan McKee, our now governor, says is it's not just an ice cream shop. It's not just a coffee shop. But the that whole idea of like, how does that business like operate 
from a process perspective and keeping people safe, like that's that's really a lot of work. It's it's a lot of work, and in some cases, it's money. You know, right. I mean, I know they were offering at one point, you, you know, you could get some free plexiglass or something, but let's face it, the majority of the business owners went out and bought all that stuff themselves. These bar owners, Absolutely. whatever, they put up the the plexiglass, then they were told for months they couldn't use it. <laughs> you know, uh, and now you, now you can again, but but so it's it's there's definitely those expenses. I mean, it's it's real. Yeah, thank you. So one thing that I just want to say from as a as an outsider watching this uh, a semi outsider watching this i would never say you're an outsider oh, no, I, was that, that. I don't think you're an outsider well to the so i've had a i've had a nice uh vantage point for for all of this being a producer for the uh for for the governor um and when he was lieutenant governor and uh and being there um with lori uh on on those early uh some of the i was on some of those early calls for the rhode island small business coalition yeah. and um these are the the things that were being fought for a year ago in those phone call in those first phone calls are the things that are happening now um and the streamlined process for this grant application is one of those right yeah. so that's that's really nice to see um, all of the all of the work that uh, Governor McKee, um, Lori, Chris, Justin, Jennifer, um, that uh, that everybody talked about on those phone calls, on those uh, on the small business town halls, um, which will be back soon. Uh, I can't I, I can't make an announcement, but the small business town halls will be back very soon. Um, the Lieutenant Governor small business town halls will be back very soon. I just want to clarify that. And, uh, you know, the, so to, to see like the complaints of like, Hey, this is really, this is really hard and taxing for these business owners to get this money. And then to, to, to go through that application and see how simple it was and to be on the, um, on that coalition text chain on that, uh, that business group text chain that Lori and I are a part of and, um, and seeing uh the business owners saying hey i got it no problem i got it no problem and um and uh you know and within like two days it was like hey three thousand people applied you know um, yeah yeah so that's that's amazing and those three thousand yeah. businesses in rhode island really needed that help uh so thank you caswell um, thank you so much i'm just the messenger i was gonna I say i was gonna I say apply you. apply early and often but you can't, that's that's voting yeah <laughs> but the, the message is apply apply yes. apply apply because it's not gonna i mean you have nothing to lose no you have nothing to lose by applying you just you just go on and there it is commerceri.com yeah. and you just apply and what's the worst that can happen you don't get it but in most cases you're going to get it right. if you make a million dollars or less and uh i mean ben's probably not eligible because he's probably made multi-millions but yeah, Ben and I are rolling in the dough. <laughs> and by the way, you met, you mentioned Chris, and he was one of the ones responsible for making it simple. In fact, there was some other wording in it just a week ago, and I was standing there uh, in Providence, and he was like, no, 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 this, this is too confusing. Take this out. Yeah, <laughs> and, it, and they did. They were very receptive at Commerce. Very the important. governor was very receptive to the input of the business community. And, you know, I yeah. think the, the governor joked, you don't have to have a, you know, a done number and all this, you know right it made it simple and it's very nice yeah, absolutely yeah yeah and if it's still if it is a little confusing because it still can be i mean you know things can still be call commerce at 521 help and they will help you they will walk you through it you yeah. can buy on the phone somebody will walk you through it call 521 help if you can't commerceri.com is the best option it's the simplest option you don't have to wait for anybody to to answer you don't have to worry about the call volume or anything like that you can just go on commerceri.com but if you do have a question call 521 help thank you very much caswell thank you um, thank you caswell uh, hey it was nice to meet you nice to nice to i was gonna say nice to e-meet you but nice e to oh, okay. vi video meet you yeah all thank right. you well, we'll thanks for coming on, on. Drive in the summer See you all later. right yeah all right we have yeah. a second guest today Ooh. Uh, and um and i'm very excited about that lori uh can you introduce claudia yeah so we're gonna shift a little bit and um so claudia um claudia, jam -packed show. huh jam-packed jam-packed show 
If anybody wants to join the show after Claudia, just tell Ben. We're, we'll just sit here all day. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't know <laughs> Business over there. breakfast marathon. <laughs> Business over lunch. Let's go. All right. Here we go. So, Claudia, welcome. Claudia Middendorf um, is the owner of Matilda Home, and she makes stunning designed quilts, handmade quilts with some very fine textiles. And I really, I, this, this startup is, is such a beautiful high-end um, business and product and from a designer perspective. So I'd love for Claudia to come on and give, hey there. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Hi, Ben. Good to meet you, too. Um, hey, Ben, this is good. So you introduced me to Casual. See, we're networking right here on video. So and Claudia. you guys, that was great having him on. Those are such important topics to, to share with the business community. Yeah. Um, really great to, to see that Commerce Rhode Island has all these, you know, channels for uh, businesses to reach out and ask for help. Right really yeah. simple um, i know i hope it goes really well and easy for for businesses when they're applying it seems to be do it seems to be doing exactly that and uh yeah and shout out to secretary uh to secretary Pryor at commerce yeah. um for all the work that they've been doing uh with governor mckee with the small business coalition with shop local rhode island uh because uh commerce is um, I believe uh, partner or sponsor of shop. Yeah, yeah. Lori. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, shout out to, to secretary Breyer and commerce for all of the amazing work that they're doing, helping. Um, but Claudia, let's not talk about yeah. that. Let's talk about you. Yeah. Let's talk about you. All right. Well, here's a first very important question. I'm going to use it as the commerce to Claudia question. Yes. <laughs> um, have you applied? I have applied. I applied yesterday. <laughs> Yes. Yay! All right. And That's it was, good. It was easier than I thought. It was easier good. than I thought. I thought that there was going, you know, I was going to have to dig up tax information and, you know, right. start doing math. Which for creatives, uh, you know, I just break out in a cold sweat when I have to do, you know, <laughs> calculators and taxes and forms and stuff like that. It was really easy. So. Well, I also would like to say that Claudia is the designer of the new shoplocalrhodeisland.com logo. Oh, wow. Yes. So um, Claudia is is a graphic designer, designer by trade. And yeah. so I will, um, I'm going to hand it over to you, Claudia, just to kind of talk about how you move, is how you're shifting your business senses. Yeah, thanks, uh, Lori. I um, I am trained as a graphic designer. I came to the Rhode Island School of Design back in uh, 2003 from the San Francisco Bay Area and graduated with an MFA in graphic design. And I, I love graphic design. I love all design, but uh, the graphic design, um, you know, it. I felt like there was something that I still needed to kind of uh, do to round out my, my um, education from RISD. So I started exploring different avenues of what I can do to really, you know, create something new and textiles was it, you know, it really kind of struck a chord with me because I grew up in the in the San Francisco Bay Area. And as many know, the the uh, coldest summers are full of fog and wind. Uh, many days. So um, I kind of wrapped myself in my grandmother's afghans that she crocheted when I was growing up. And uh, I wanted to do something a little bit different. And, you know, the, the American quilts have always struck me as really beautiful, but I wanted to kind of take it a step further. And so I just started experimenting and, you know, sewing some, you know, different prototypes and really stumbled upon using linen as the a source of you know the fabric in in these quilts it's really sustainable it uses the whole plant um and it's breathable mm -hmm. um and it feels great the more you wash it the softer it feels so i started experimenting and i haven't stopped since so um 
uh, it's just a wonderful experience. You know, I've gone to some craft shows in New York and in San Francisco. So that has been a really fun journey to, to develop that. And how would you and how would you say people have uh, have been receiving it, Claudia? Um, really great. Um, you know, they're really enamored with the whole idea of a linen quilt rather than something that's made out of cotton. And as you know, linen is very textural. So some of the texture on some of the quilts are are really unique. You know, it's like a modern twist on the traditional quilt. Um, they're intricately detailed and they're, they're very cozy. So they're great layering pieces throughout each season. You can use them in springtime, in the fall. In the winter, I layer them up with down comforters. So, you know, mm. that's really the conversation I have with my customers. And the other thing is, is they love to see how they can have something custom made for them. So, you know, this is this is my stack of, you know, um, custom swatches from different people that I've worked with in the last couple of years. So, um, you know, this one is the most recent one. It's one of the new colors that I've done. So, you know, everybody gets a little bit of a card with their name oh, on it. And then, beautiful. you know, I put the dimensions on the back, you know, um, you know, what kind of stitch they want, you know, if they want um, on this particular customer, we went with a, a soft yellow um, personalized swatch on them. Mm. And, um, yeah, I mean, we, we make all kinds of sizes, kings, queens. Um, I just did uh, a couple of twin, custom twin matching wow, um, quilts for a interior designer in um, Martha's Vineyard. Mm. Yeah. So how did you, um, Ben just put up your beautiful write-up in um, yes. Stuart <laughs> Living. <laughs> that was so great, yeah. <laughs> ben's that? sound is really low. Sorry, um, Ben's sound is really low. Actually, yeah, sound is low. Yeah. yeah, we can't really hear you that well. Interesting. Okay. But so you, but so you put it up, and then what did you say, Ben? Can you hear me now? Better. Yeah, yes. that's better. Okay, that's weird. Was it low the whole show? No. Okay. It went really low. But so, so Claudia, we're looking at Martha Stewart living this gorgeous photo and beautiful write up. So tell us how this national attention came about. Um, well, I have been, you know, since COVID, I've been participating in some online marketplaces. And one of them is called Field and Supply. They're based out of New York. And I think they, found me through the field and supply website and they reached out to me back in September and asked to see a, what assortment I had in my studio that I could send to them in New York in their studios. So, um, you know, after that, I, I sent, sent my quilts out there. And then a couple months ago, they reached out to me with their writer and we had a little, at one hour interview and the rest is history. Yeah. yeah that's so good. That's so good. How yeah. how has the how has your the feedback been with that? It's been really positive, really great. I've I've noticed a, a big upsurge in visits to my website. So it's really been a really great uh, tool, you know, to to get my name out there. You know, oh, I'm a yeah. I started just a few years ago. So it's really great to get that press and just more interest and, in, you know, seeing if. Right. And your what, website is so beautiful. I, oh, um, thank you. Can, can we yeah. bring up the website? I mean, it That's really I'm is. I'm trying to get that. Um, how, how do you spell it? It's M A T H. T H. Yeah. So it's matildhome.com. Yeah. Yeah. So you can take a look at some of the beautiful heirloom quilts. Yeah, I one of the things I um, 
we we've been talking to a lot of businesses over the last year about how they have shifted and so it's interesting that you say one of the things you did was you went to an online market and so had that been something you were doing before or had that is this something that you have started and will continue in your business i missed the, the earlier part what was your question how has this shifted Right, we've talked to businesses about how they're shifting um, during the pandemic and you mentioned field and supply. So I'm just wondering, were you doing online markets before the pandemic or was or has this grown over the last year? You know, um, right when COVID hit, I had already planned for the, the 2020 season for any kind of in-person fairs. So I was going to be going to uh, one called Renegade Craft Fair in San Francisco that I'd been attending for a couple of years now. And Field and Supply was that one that I just got into that I'd really been looking forward to for a long time. My sister was going to fly out from San Francisco and we were going to, you know, make a whole weekend of it. And it quite frankly shifted overnight. I mean, people were, you know, Field and Supply, the people there are great to work for, Brad Ford, Chad Rawlings, uh, Aaron. They all put together the website in, uh, you know, a matter of weeks. Wow. And, um, you know, so they really pivoted quite fast. Um, I participated in another one. It was a wholesale um, uh, website, uh, online marketplace called Shop Object, and they're based out of New York City. Nice. And they pivoted quite quickly with everything online. It well, wasn't as seamless as, as, as others, but you know, in time, I think they worked out all the bugs. So, so that's what businesses were doing. They were really working right, out the bugs right. of this online marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, it's really interesting because in the, in the shop local, you are, you could, for free, put up five beautiful quilts for sale. You know, you sell one, put another one up. So I, I feel like this is um, this is so timely and so important. I think it's it's one of I think it's one of the high points in terms of you know I think COVID was was really you know struck everybody really hard. But one of the high points was is I think Rhode Island really came together as a business community. And they really kind of embraced each other in yeah. ways that I think are, are really kind of, you know, um, expanding more and yeah. more each day. I think people yeah. are reaching out to each other and they're understanding that Rhode Island is one of the smallest states, but we have so much talent here. Uh, and it's of talent, you know? I yeah, it's incredible. I am blown away. Every I kid Ben because every time we do an interview, he says, that was awesome. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you just can't believe the stuff that we do here in this little state. We do everything. And that that's that's what we'll continue to do. You know, and I think Rhode Island School of Design is an asset there. I mean, I think that's yeah. really an untapped um, yeah. source. And we want to bring that talent here in Rhode Island, you know, make them successful in the state. Yeah, exactly. You know, reach yeah. out to these other businesses that need, you know, especially, you know, coming from a graphic design perspective, you know, it's so important to have the branding really on point, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, I've, I've participated in small business webinars. Right. And in person prior to, to COVID. And, you know, the emphasis was really put on make your branding number one. Mm -hmm. And some businesses just don't put that at the forefront. And I think it, it could really hurt them. So yeah. that's why I'm yeah. a really big proponent of, you know, having a really strong brand. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're finalizing our Visual Thrive logo with you now. So that's yeah. really fun, too. Oh, it's so fun. I, I love great. doing the branding part. We it's love it, too. It's really one of my favorites. Yeah. Cla Claudia, I have one question for you um, sure. before the lightning round. And yeah. I, unfortunately, have to go because I have to produce another show in a couple, yes. in like okay. a yeah. couple seconds. Uh, as, an, as an artist, as a graphic designer and an artist, are you aware of NFTs? NFTs? No, I, I don't know what that is. All right, Claudia, look up NFTs. Um, You're going to have to come and watch. You're going to make 
thousands and thousands and thousands, maybe millions of dollars off of NFTs in the next five years. I guarantee it. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, all right. That's my question. Claudia, please. Okay. Uh, you're amazing. And, uh, and I'm Thank so sorry. You, I'm going to be backstage, but I got to, I got to, I have other people, uh, unfortunately now waiting so, on, on my phone. So, you yeah. know, um, we have had a jam packed show and let's just say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can't thank you enough. And we will continue to do what we're doing. And we really want to maintain and grow our, our shop local Rhode Island small business network. I can't thank you enough for coming on and just sharing the work that you do. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I, I'm really excited for Rhode Island. Thank you, Claudia. Um, Claudia, uh, I'm going to check out your site and, and, uh, and then also your graphic design stuff. Cause, uh, I love the new shop local, uh, logo and, um, and Thank I'm you. always looking for new logos for things. Uh, Great. come yeah. back. So we're going to have a conversation about NFTs at, okay. at another point. I want you to look it up as, okay, a, as a graphic designer <laughs> and a RISD graduate. I want you to look up NFTs and then I want you to come back for that conversation. Yeah. Okay. We don't usually give our guests homework, but yeah. now we're doing homework <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, Claudia. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great day, Lori. Uh, I will talk to you soon. Thank okay. you. Um, all right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.